I'm going to talk about money management and I want you guys to follow me. I'll spend some time to talk about money management because I see a lot of you guys don't, you do not put money management into consideration when trading. And this is very, very dangerous. It's something that can really scatter your account and your trading plan. After today, I'm going to talk about how to draw a trading plan. Because if you don't plan anything, hardly you can succeed doing it right. So, but today, let me discuss the money management because everyone here is already trading and you really need this money management. Now, you see in our group, I put up something in the group chat. And in that group chat, I explain, I put it up, okay, let me show you from here. This morning, if you have this account, I guess you guys can see my screen. This is the screen I want to show you now. So if you have this account, you need to follow this instruction. Very, very important, please. If you have $100 account, you must not use a lot size more than 0 0.01. And you must not place more than a trade at a particular time. 0 0.01 and one trade at a particular time. If you have $200 account, you must not use a lot size more than 0 0.02 and you must place only one trade at a particular time. If you are to place two trades, that means you are going to share your lot size into 0 0.01 for the two different trades. I believe that is understood. If you have $300 account, you must not place more than 0 0.03 at a particular time. And if you are going to place multiple trade, reduce the lot size and share it in those trade, like 0 0.01 in this trade, 0 0.01 for this other pair, 0 0.01 for this other pair. That means you cannot trade more than three pairs using that account. So most of the time, you see guys having $500 and they use 0 0.05 and they will place like five different trades. You are killing your account if you do this. If you have $500 and you place a trade of 0 0.05 lots, you must not place another trade because you have used up all the lots recommended for that account. If you have $500 and you place 0 0.05 in five different places, that means that $500 account is carrying 0 0.15, which is too much lot size for that account. If anything goes wrong, you're going to crash. If you lose 100 pips, that means you're going to lose $150 out of your $500. Do you see it? So that is why money management is very important. If you have a $500 account, you must not use more than 0.05 and you must not place more than one trade. If you have to place multiple trades, then reduce the lot size and share it on the trades. I believe you understand this. The same apply to other accounts. And when you are trading, know the risk. What am I going to lose? If I, would, I wouldn't give anyone signal that is more than, that is, the take profit, the stop loss is more than 100 pips. And if I give you a signal that the take profit is 100 pips, note assuredly that the uh, stop loss will be either 50 pips or 100 pips. If I give you a signal that the take profit is 200 pips, that is a long term signal. But consider what you are going to lose first before consider when you, considering what you're going to make. Because the loss part will be more painful than the gain part. So, in placing trades, what would be your, loss, uh, your stop loss? 
how much are you willing to risk if anything goes wrong? Once you are able to ascertain this, then if it's what you are getting, it's worth taking, go for the trade. If it is not worth taking, get out of the trade. These things are very, very important because for you to stay long in forex markets and to do well, you must be able to calculate your risk and know what your risk is and your willingness to take that risk. If it's something you are not willing to take, then don't do the trade. This morning, I wanted to trade GU, GPP USD. When I look at my stop loss, where my stop loss is going to be, it is too big for me. I get out of the trade. I didn't place that trade. Buy for GU. Because if I place trade, I will allow my trade to run, either stop loss hit or take profit hit. But before my stop loss is going to be hit, then you know, the market has actually reversed. Because I won't place my stop loss in a place where the market will just go and hit. It should be very safe. It should be in a safe place. That is why money management is very important. And I always look at that before going into trade. So, guys, when you are placing trade, consider your lot size. These are the standard lot size for account that you are going to trade. I believe this is very easy to understand. Okay, now let's go to the candlestick. Candlestick. The candlestick pattern is something that every trader must understand. You must know candlestick pattern. And your knowledge, your knowledge of this candlestick will determine how well you will do at times. Will determine how well you will do at times. But before this, I'm, I would like to show you some. I would like to show you some other candlesticks that is not there on that chart, on the screenshot I just showed you guys. I want to show you some of these candlesticks, and it's going to be very nice if you understand them and trade them. There are other candlesticks apart from these ones that I showed you. I want you to know them apart from this. And the other ones I will show you. These candlesticks, majorly, they are used to determine market exhaustion or market reversal. We use them to determine market exhaustion or market reversal. Exhaustion means the market is like tired, not willing to go the direction that it has been going. So we use candlesticks to determine market exhaustion. Or market reversal. I'll try my best to explain each of these candlesticks. Now, the topic I will call it candlestick pattern. Candlestick pattern are divided into three. Number one, single pattern. Number two, double pattern. Number three, triple pattern. I'll repeat that again. Candlestick pattern is divided into three. Number one, single pattern. Number two, double pattern. Number three, triple candlestick pattern. Today I will talk about single stick, uh, single candlestick pattern. The single candlestick pattern. The single candlestick pattern is easy to identify because it's just only one candle. Only one candle. That is a single stick candlestick pattern. It's easy to identify. When you see, you can easily point out this is single stick candle uh, pattern. And exactly that is what I want to show you this morning. The, but let me, there are some I didn't put into my screenshot. Let me quickly look for them. Let me quickly look for them so that I can show you guys. I'll show you this, doji. The first one that comes to mind is doji, spelled D-O-J-I. Doji candlestick pattern is easy to recognize. This is doji. Can you guys see my screen? 
I want to know if you guys, okay, good, you are seeing my screen. Okay, so this is doji. And what all these candlesticks mean is, is the explanation you are seeing there. There's no way I can describe this without the picture. That is why I'm bringing out the picture out. So this is how doji look like. What does doji mean? Doji means there is market indecision. That's the meaning of doji. There is market indecision. And these are the different kinds of doji that we have. We have the neutral doji, we have the long leg doji, we have the gravestone doji, and we have the dragonfly doji. But generally what doji signifies is market indecision. Now this is the neutral doji, this is the uh, uh, long leg doji. This neutral doji, what does it mean? The buyer and the sellers are equal. Long leg doji, the same thing, but just that the legs is longer than the closing price and the starting price. The gravestone doji, buyers were the one ruling, but later the buyers dropped it and no seller is taking charge. That's why you did not see any, any stick for selling. So this is the gravestone doji. Why the dragonfly doji? The sellers were the ones taking charge, but they drop it for the buyers. And no buyer is available to take it. And that is a dragonfly doji. So this is doji. Doji signifies market indecision. Indecision in the trend. If you are riding a trend, maybe a buy trend, and doji appear, or doji is formed, doji candlestick is formed, this is market indecision. So you should know this. This is market indecision telling you that there is no decision taken at this point. Make, telling you that this uptrend you are riding, no more decision is taken in that line. Possibly there will be market reversal. Possibly the trend is exhausted. That's the meaning of that. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is, the next one I'm going to show you is hammer. I have that one in my screen, in my shot. I have that one, hammer. Hammer and hangman. I believe you guys can see this on my screen. Let me be sure. Okay, yes, you can see it. So this is hammer and hangman. This is how it looks like. And when you are trading hammer, Look at it very well. It's always at the end of a trend, like this trend. This is this was a sell trend, and at the end you see hammer. This is a hammer with a long tail. The tail will be longer than any of the candles that has been forming when the downtrend has been coming. It will be longer down. The tail will be longer. Sorry, my my screenshot cut this shot. That's why you couldn't see the long tail or shadow. Like this, it will be very long, and it will be long down. So that is a hammer. It shows hammer. Hammer is, is, is a trend reversal candlestick. It's a single, look at it, this is a hammer. It's a trend reversal candlestick. It's telling you that buyers are taking charge. This long trend you are riding down, buyers are taking charge now, and the market, this trend is going to reverse upward. Please, when you see hammer, it's not, that is not, a criteria for you to just jump in at the next candle. No. When you see a hammer formed at the end of a trend, that's at the end of a downtrend, you always see hammer at the end of a downtrend. When hammer is formed at the end of a downtrend, wait for the next candlestick to form. When the next candlestick is formed and is bullish, confirming this hammer, then in the third, the beginning of the third candlestick, you enter the trade and you begin to trade. I believe you guys understand this and it's simple. So this is hammer, this is hangman. Look at the hangman. The hangman is like hammer and it's formed at the end of an uptrend. Please note this, hammer is formed at the end of a downtrend. Why hangman is formed at the end of an uptrend? And hangman, hammer is bullish, hangman is bearish. 
please know this. Hanging man is bearish, hammer is bullish. And once hammer is hanging man is formed at the end of an uptrend, we we'll see the long tail or the shadow, the long shadow, and a small top, that is small body. This signifies a reversal. Once there was there was this uptrend, and once you see hanging man form, know that there is a reversal. There's going to be a reversal. But wait for the next candle to confirm that. Let the next bearish candle form, confirming this hanging man. Once this next bearish candle is formed, confirming this hanging man, enter at the beginning of the third candle. That's a very good decision. So after Doji, we have Hammer and hanging man. Now I'll go to the next one, which is inverted Hammer and shooting star. That's the next one, inverted hammer and shooting star. Inverted hammer is also a candlestick, a candlestick that shows trend exhaustion or trend reversal. When you see inverted hammer at the end of a downtrend, it's telling you that, okay, buyers are taking charge at the beginning of that of that inverted hammer when it started you see that buyers took charge to this point it was a very huge candlestick then came down and closed at this point it's still telling you that this buyer that is taking charge of this market once you see inverted hammer formed weights and wait for the next candle to confirm that inverted hammer. Once you see another candle confirming that inverted hammer, it is time to go into that trade. Now, inverted hammer will be formed at the end of a downtrend. It's at the end of a downtrend you are going to see inverted hammer. Inverted hammer will not be formed at the end of an uptrend. It's at the end of a downtrend. Please note that. Now, the next one is shooting star. The next one is shooting star. Shooting star is the opposite of hungry man. And this is shooting star. It's formed at the end of an uptrend. Shooting star is not formed at the end of a downtrend, but at the end of an uptrend. There has been an uptrend, and at the end, you will see shooting star with a very long tail and a bearish body. Once a shooting star is formed, wait for the next candle to form and complete, confirming the shooting star that, okay, this shooting star that is telling us the trend is reversing downward, this candle has confirmed it because this is a bearish candle. Then at the beginning of the third candle, you can enter the trade. Very well. I haven't understood that. I'll go to the next candle stick, and that one is spinning top. I don't have the screenshot here. That one is spinning top. Let's look at how spinning top look like. And I'll be able to explain that because pictures are very important. This is how a spinning top look like. You can see, this is how a spinning top look like. A spinning top is also a single candlestick pattern. And a spinning top shows you that there is market exhaustion. The trend is exhausted. Once you see a spinning top at the end of a bearish trend, start thinking bullish. Once you see a spinning top at the end of, a, of an uptrend, of a bullish trend, start thinking bearish. That's it. Start thinking bearish. But since spinning top doesn't tell you, okay, it is time. Maybe you see spinning top at the end of a bearish trend. You say, okay, it is time to buy. No. You are going to look for other things to confirm. It's only giving you information that this trend you are riding is exhausted. And you know, distant time is going to reverse. That's a function of the spinning top. So put that into consideration. When you are trading, this is a bearish, a, a bullish spinning top, and this is a bearish spinning top. 
You see a bullish spinning top, closes up, open is down. Bearish spinning top, open is up, closes down. This we plant in when we do the ordinary candlesticks the other time. So guys, these are the candlestick pattern I want to show you. I told you that candlestick pattern, they are divided into three classes. The single stick pattern, the double stick pattern, and the triple stick pattern. Today we consider the single stick pattern. We said in the single stick pattern, we have the doji. And we saw the different types of doji. And we also said we have hammer, we have hangman, we have inverted hammer, we have shooting star, and we have spinning tops. Now, these are single stick candle pattern. Once you see them, it's telling you that there is a reversal. Now, consigning the hammer and hungry man, consigning the hammer and the hungry man, I told you that hammer is shown, is seen at the end of a downtrend. And you see the hammer with a small head and a very long, bearish tail or shadow. That is an hammer. But you're going to see hungry man at the end of an uptrend with a very small bullish body and a long tail or shadow. So that's Hangi Man. I guess you guys understand that. Now, the other one I also explained is the inverted hammer and the shooting star. We call this inverted hammer because this long tail in hammer, this long tail is at the downside. For the hanging man, the long tail is at the upside. I mean, the inverted hammer, the long tail is at the upside. Both carry, carry bullish body. Inverted hammer and hammer carry bullish body. And we see inverted hammer at the end of a downward trend. The same way we saw hammer at the end of a downward trend. Now, shooting star is also like Shooting star is also like the hangy man. And shooting star is the shadow of a shooting star on the field is at the top, long at the top. Unlike that of the hangy man that is at the bottom. Both shooting star and hangy man, they, are, they have bearish body. And you can see the candlesticks forming downward so guys this is single stick candle pattern in the next class i am going to show you the double stick candle pattern and the triple stick candle pattern and how to trade them i'm going to show you how to do that so before i go i would like to take some questions from you guys ask me question just type your question and I'll be able to answer your question. Type your question. I'm waiting for your questions. Everyone, 